Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to the Big Battery Rhino 2. This is a 14.3 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate whole house battery. This thing right here is quite impressive. So let's go ahead and unbox this and then go over all of its features here in this video. And then in the next video, we will hook this up to an inverter and hopefully get to see the full installation. So let's go ahead and take a look at its features. This battery was delivered by Freight in a crate that was very nice, well packaged with lots of foam and no damage whatsoever during transit. The battery is shipped in this nice strong wooden box that has metal tabs all the way around the side. In order to get those tabs moved up, I'm just going to use a screwdriver and peel back those so they'll be able to slide through this groove here. A layer of protective foam is over the top of the battery. Thankfully they have some nice thick ropes on the bottom and top of the battery and that gives you a handle that you can move this battery around with. Now it does weigh 309 pounds so be very careful as you're moving this around. All right. My goal is to uh, teeter this over to the edge of the box, get it off onto the floor and we should be good to go at that point. On the back of the battery, there is a mounting plate where you could put this up on the wall. However, that would require quite a significant amount of machinery in order to lift this up to do that. So my battery here is just going to be placed on the ground. Now keep in mind the battery is 34 inches high by 22 inches wide by 9 inches thick and weighs 309 pounds. So it is a big battery. Be sure to use either some equipment or a couple of people to move this around. Now before I take off some of these covers and we look at the battery, I just want to go over a few specs. This is a 14.3 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It has a 280 amp hour discharge rate. And one nice thing about this battery is that it can be mounted outside because it has a weather resistance to it. But get this, the charging temperature is negative 4 degrees to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason for that is because this battery has a heater inside. So basically when the sun comes up, the solar will come into the battery and heat this up and go ahead and get it up to temperature so it won't be damaging cells. Now if you're using this on the grid, then it will also use the grid power first to keep the battery up to temperature and so you're not gonna be damaging the cells if it drops below freezing like a typical lithium iron phosphate battery would. The battery is UL certified, so it passes inspection. It has a 10 year warranty and has an 8,000 cycles DOD. So you're gonna get many, many years out of this battery if used properly. It has a continuous output of 10,000 watts and like a typical lithium iron phosphate battery, the charging voltage is 55.6 to 57 volts. So. This battery is quite a nice battery. Let's go ahead and dive into pulling these covers off here, looking at all of the connection points and breakers, and also the LCD screen on this battery. First up, the battery had two different ropes on the back of it, so you could use these as handles, and that was a lifesaver. Without those, this battery would be uh, much more difficult to move around. So these are removable, as you can see here. Once you have the battery in place, just pull those off, and you can uh, use them for some other project. Included in the package you have the battery itself, which we'll go over here in detail in just a moment, but it also has two sets of 2 aught cables. Because this battery has an output of 200 amps continuous, they have doubled up the cables to uh, relieve the amperage off of one cable into two, which is very smart. Uh, so they have the push fitting connection over here with a button which will allow you to remove these. Also, you can swivel these around a little bit whenever they are in place. On the other end, they have already removed some of the sheathing, as you can see here, and that will make this easy to pull off and get right into your inverter connection. So, two sets, so you got two of your uh, negative and two of your positive cables. The next thing included is a little bit of mounting hardware and a communication cable. These cables are ethernet style, and on one end, there is a 
plastic piece that has a rubber gasket inside and that will help dust and water from getting to that communication port. The other side does not have that and it's going to go into the inverter communication port. So nice that that is included. It is already wired up to uh, communicate with an inverter. The height of the battery is 34 inches, so just under three feet. The depth out from the wall is nine inches, so it doesn't take up too much space in that direction. And then it is 22, almost 23 inches in width here. And that uh, is definitely going to be great to fit here behind my door. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the battery. So there are some plastic protective covers which will prevent anybody or anything from getting to the connections down in here. And it also gives a stylish look to this. Now for here in my shop, there's nobody else walking around so I don't necessarily have to put those on but I probably will keep them on for the uh, aesthetics of this. So it is the same on both sides. And you can see up here, there is a ground screw and that's where I'll be attaching this to earth ground. And over here you have a little port for the communication cable to go through. All right, let me get a screwdriver real quick and I will remove these side covers. There are four screws that hold this in place. Once those four screws have been removed, this cover just falls right off here and you can see what is up underneath. This side of the battery has four different terminals for the positive cables. Two of these will go to the inverter and two of these could be used to link another battery together. Down here is a breaker. Now it's got a push tab that won't open because you have to loosen up these thumb screws first in order to access that breaker. This is a DC breaker for connecting the battery to the um, terminals up here. So if I pull that open, you can just see that's where I'm going to flip later to turn this unit on. Now moving over here, there are three different screws. This one says battery communication, battery communication, and this one says RS-485 and CAN. So the top one here is going to go up to the inverter to talk to that. The bottom ones you would just use if you were connecting batteries together. So I won't be needing these since I just have the single battery here. Um, but the top one I will need because that is going to go to the inverter. I've got a 6K Lux Power inverter to be used with this battery. Now below the breaker there is a sticker with some great information about the product and also a carrying handle down here which is nice to see. You could grab that with hopefully somebody else and slide this around if you need to. Here's a close-up look at the specs if you want to see those in more detail. Here on the other side of the battery, there are four negative terminals. Two of those would go to the inverter and two of those would go to an additional battery if you were to link more than one together. Down below that, there is a display. We'll turn this on in just a moment and see what the battery shows. Over here, there's a state of charge indicator and also an alarm and a run icon. So uh, you can see by uh, these LEDs what the state of charge is. Down below here is the on off switch. We'll be able to turn that on here in just a moment. And over here is the ID bits. If you have multiple batteries linked up together, you have to change the ID of each one. And so we'll open that as well and take a look and see what uh, that's about. Now up here in this corner, uh, there are two little white stoppers. I pulled one of them off and the nut that was holding this on fell down into the battery. So uh, it says PC on there. I'm not sure what that means, but Unless you want this uh, falling down in the battery, I'd recommend you don't unscrew those unless you need them for whatever reason. I'm going to press the on button here and let's see what this indicates. All right, we've got some blue lights here. The alarm button blinked. It says it's at 75%. And if we move over here, 55% is what it was shipped out. Let me zoom in a little quick for you. So if I press one of these buttons down here, the screen should come back up. There we go. Big battery is what it shows. Lithium iron phosphate, 48 volt Rhino 2, standby mode, volts 52.77, current 0 amps. There you can see the uh, protocol. Moving over here, you can see the light is on at the 75% to show that uh, value there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the battery off and we can open up that ID port right there. The ID bits are primarily for whenever you have multiple batteries lined up. However, 
we're going to be using just the one battery, so I may put it into position one real quick. All right, you can see all these little dip switches in here. I'm going to push this one dip switch right here, and I think that's going to be for uh, position number one. So, anyway, this right here is just going to be used one time. As long as you only have one battery, it doesn't really matter. And that's my first look at the Rhino 2 from Big Battery. This battery is quite nice. If you want to check out more information on this battery, I will have a link in the description down below. Using that link will also save you 10% on any purchase site-wide, so keep that in mind as you are shopping around. They also have inverters that will go with this battery, and uh, you'll be able to see that here in an upcoming video as I install a 6 kilowatt uh, inverter on top of this battery. I'm going to be running my shop here off-grid, and so we'll be able to do all kinds of tests looking at how this battery performs. I'm Seth with Land of House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.